Welcome back. Palantir just did the best thing in months, in my opinion, if not this whole year. So what do I mean by that? In the last two weeks, we've had four new videos, three of them featuring Alex Karp, which is in pretty much direct response to the outcry of how Alex Karp has not been present for obviously all of the earnings calls. He's been in some videos ahead of earnings calls, during the earnings call, but after that last earnings call, there was a lot of outcry, wanting to see more of the CEO to know that he is there driving the business, and here he is. In these three, Alex Karp has been public. Now, one of the things he said in this video, which is right here, is that Palantir is not doing so well with their sales side of the business. Of course, he mentioned this relative to their technology. Palantir is all about hiring the best engineers they can so that they can build the best products they can, which happens to be a little tough on the company when it comes actually time to sell those products and their whole sales team did not really exist before this year when they started building it out after going public last year. So anyway, here's what Carp said on sales. We're bad at sales, but we're great at product. Most people who build products don't do sales. So you need to have make sure it's about the product. I got an email from Mike, a subscriber of the channel, and he reached out to me talking about basically the sales and Palantir's landing page for their ads for when I had brought this up in a video where I was seeing Palantir ads. I've seen some of you say you actually see ads before the Palantir videos that I make, which is very interesting. Anyway, basically what he was saying is he wants to help Palantir in ways that they can better improve their ad experience, their landing page, because he sees the main problem is that Palantir, they're basically engineers and, and they naturally have a dislike for sales, which we've seen exemplified by Alex Karp, but they're also very product focused. And in 2021, even with amazing products, you have to communicate with how the product will get you from where you are now to where you want to be. It's the bridge between the two spots. So that's basically a response to those that think Palantir doesn't need to worry too much about sales. This has to be communicated to the right person. Palantir tends to talk about the technical aspects of the software and what it can do in terms of engineering, which will impress engineers, but they are not the buyers of such software. I've never heard them make a business case for why to use their software and how much it can save companies. More on this exact point in a moment. I've also heard amazing details of what Foundry did for airlines and how it saved the millions of dollars. Just that case alone would be enough for an exec to pick up the phone and inquire, but they never talk about that aspect of their software. I do have a response to this, but let's keep going to what Mike has said. The ironic thing is that all of this is fully explained in the founder's book, Zero to One. Attached is an example. All right, so he gives an example of issues for a landing page, which we will observe in a second. Basically, there are certain ways to improve landing pages and make sure everything's readable, digestible, to understand exactly what's happening, to optimize for the understanding and the direct sort of response to Palantir's ads. He said he would love to help Palantir whenever he could. Um, how should I present those? So I had told him that as far as I know, there's not really an ad landing page. It's just advertisements that direct to the corresponding page, such as Foundry for Supply Chain comes to this. Basically, Foundry is supply chain part of it. This is what he was talking about. Again, thank you for all of this, Mike. I know we're still working on what we can do to actually generate some insights for Palantir, but basically this is a, an example right here on some annotations of a document of a website and basically analyzing the difficulty to read. So with all this technical jargon, I know uh, retail investors feel this as well. If something is way too technical, it's too hard to understand, you'll give up, you'll stop watching, and you might think it doesn't matter, or you might just be confused, just flat out. I think it is definitely important that the difficulty to read is not uh, necessarily professional, especially if you are catering towards business executives um, who may be professional in certain aspects of technical speak but not all so definitely definitely um good to discuss thank you for reaching out mike this brings me back we've had demo days we've had the double click events two days ago we had palantir's video release this is what i opened the video with saying this is the single best thing palantir has done in my opinion in the last few months if not the whole year and why is that well 
as far as I'm concerned, this is the best video they've ever produced. It has never been more clear about exactly what they're targeting, what their systems do, and what the actual value is of using Palantir Foundry. They do it in a great way. It almost seems like Johnny Ive giving an Apple ad. The woman just has a great narration. It is so on point with Palantir. It is narrated so well. It's put together so, so well. I wanna play these first three minutes of exactly what is happening so that you can see and really react to what I have as well. And basically it gives the overview. So put yourself in the shoes of someone that would be trying to make the decision of whether or not to use Palantir Foundry for business operations and the like, and whether this is explaining correctly or if there's too much jargon or something else. Palantir is finally getting closer and closer and Carp knows it, they're getting closer and closer to the ultimate sort of version of their sales strategy. And it's very hard, it's not like this is easy. If it was easy, they would have done it already, it would be perfect already. In my opinion, they're getting so, so close, and as I said at the beginning, they are taking advice. They know if Alex Carp needs to be present more, he will be present more. If they need to work on their sales strategy, they will do it. It's so great to see them making progress in all of these areas. So, I'm gonna play that and be back with more analysis. Supply chains are under more stress than ever. As the global pandemic causes disruption on a massive scale, it highlights the inherent complexity of multiple suppliers, items, demands, and destinations. And it reveals the underlying weaknesses in the setup and management of all too many key supply chains. Most supply chain software lacks the capacity and the flexibility to deal with complex challenges and unforeseen disruptions. And getting locked into a long-term software solution that doesn't deliver the requisite resilience, scalability and adaptability can be an expensive, frustrating and business-limiting mistake. Even the programs that can handle complexity reasonably well don't give you the key point of differentiation that really matters. And that's the ability to make better business decisions, even as the world around you is changing fast. That's where Foundry comes in. Unlike traditional software that takes ages to install, configure, and get up to speed, Foundry starts adding value from the word go. It's designed to work straight out of the box bringing drag-and-drop simplicity to data management tasks that used to take weeks of skilled programmer time. Foundry lets you break free from inflexible software to connect all your critical business functions. It leverages all your existing tech investments too, while neatly sidestepping the blocker of system migration. You'll find that you can unify and turbocharge your legacy systems in hours then use individual Foundry modules to make all your data more powerful and more insightful than ever. The ultimate goal? Rapid and evolving understanding of supply chain dynamics, informed by many thousands of data points to drive consistently better decision-making. Foundry can help you resolve everything from short-term operational issues to long-term strategic considerations. Foundry delivers all the power and flexibility you need, with the capacity to incorporate and consolidate data from myriad sources into one single, sharply defined interface. Foundry lets you integrate, harmonize, and evaluate the core relationships across all your data sets, breaking down the silo views you've traditionally been limited to. With this common data foundation, you can accurately model current and future operational scenarios and then apply the built-in decision-making tools to keep on optimizing supply chain performance. Foundry is not only a powerful data integration and analytical tool, it's also an operating system for the modern enterprise. Armed with the optimal plan of action, Foundry helps you implement your decisions, integrating live with all your existing systems with full tracking and transparency built in. 
Now again, I want to reiterate that this is the best presentation I have seen from Palantir on exactly the value of why you would choose Foundry for your business. Now, I want to play this second clip here. It's towards the end. In the middle here, it's basically analyzing and it working with the NHS and what Palantir was able to do to help the NHS in UK, vaccine distribution and all of that. It's basically sort of splitting up the beginning, which is all about the value of Foundry, and it's adding this user sort of story, and which is, I think, what Mike said maybe he was lacking, which, of course, when you say you're going to do a demo day or a double-click event where it's straight up an hour and a half, two hours, or just an hour, I forget exactly how long they were, some of them were really, really long and dense and sometimes just straight up confusing and boring with all this technical stuff, if you're able to sort of open with the exact reasons for why you would use Foundry and then show a precise use case, there's nothing more powerful than that. It's really about demonstrating the power of Foundry, the, the platform that they're trying to sell, and the sales will come after that. Of course, they do have a sales team to make those direct connections, but this is more indirect outreach and putting that out there. But I do want to give you this last clip here, which I think is just as good, a really, really powerful end to a very powerful video. Now you may be wondering what problems Foundry could solve in your organization. We offer a range of sophisticated, out-of-the-box archetypes to work with, like our supply chain archetype, with workflows and capabilities to address many core issues supply chain managers and planners can face, from excess inventory to bullwhip effects. Foundry is designed as a modular system, meaning you can take what you need from the service and leave what you don't. And since Foundry is delivered on a software-as-a-service basis, there's no expensive setup nor long-term commitment required. Foundry can help you start solving issues in your supply chain almost immediately by integrating all your data sources and relating them to one another. You get the all-round, powerful, data-informed overview you've always wanted. You get the ability to strategize and plan system improvements and check all their effects through our twin data model. And when you start making decisions based on Foundry Insights, you'll notice that every decision is better than the last because you can incorporate real-time data and learnings from every action into the next set of recommendations. Soon, you'll be implementing the efficiencies to drive improved system performance and greater profitability for your business. We empower our customers to use their own data to turn insights into actions, models into outcomes, faster than anyone else. That's the power of Foundry. Now, I know some people are upset with the overly technical aspect of Palantir's marketing that has previously been, but they'll also be upset with Palantir making these bold claims towards the end of what they said, turning insights into actions faster than everyone else. But you, you can't have it both ways, really. So Palantir will continue to produce highly technical marketing. You can see their demo days and double-click events, but I think they are getting better and better at this sort of short form content and the words that matter. And it's really great to see this sort of transition, especially in the wake of Alex Karp saying that he admits they need to work more on this and get better at it. So great to see the progress here. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What did you think about this video? I will leave the rest uh, link to it if you want to view the rest of it in the description, of course, until next time.